ceilings were all the rage back in the 60s and 70s, but we all know that trend is long gone. Figuring out how to remove a popcorn ceiling texture can be a messy chore, but thankfully our next guest has some tips to help. Cassie Beach is an interior stylist and blogger with the page Made with Grace and Grit, and she's here to show us how we can remove those popcorn ceilings safely and easily. Welcome, Cassie. Thank you. Popcorn ceilings. Yeah, you not know, my favorite. As just someone who doesn't really recognize little things like this, is I, I wouldn't even notice that. But when you're going to sell your house or buy a house, these are things people look at. So yes. we're going to talk about how you can get rid of the popcorn ceiling yourself. Okay. Tips for that. And then also talk about some trends of what you could do. So you brought in some supplies. What do you need to be able to do this? So first of all, you're definitely going to want some plastic drop cloth. You can get this really affordably and you're gonna to wanna to cover your flooring, especially if you have carpet or anything like that, it gets very messy. Okay. And I would tape above your trim around the perimeter of the room. And even if you have a lot of doors and windows, it might be easier just to take it, drape it over the window as well, just to save yourself from the cleanup later. Okay. Um, so then you'll also want, this is a weed sprayer. You want a brand new weed sprayer, because you don't want to spray that in <laughs> And you fill it with some nice warm water. You can tell I've already used this one because it's already got some on there and then a variety of scrapers. So these I just got at Menards. This one I like because it can turn and bend. I must have it oh, tightened yeah. up so you can get into different angles. This one's a nice smaller one um, if you have some tough spots. And then this one's nice, especially when you go for your first pass because it has these little magnets that like clip over the top. So you can put grocery sacks in there to catch, um, it? To catch it because it's, it's terribly messy. Like you'll get a couple garbage bags, if not more out of a standard room. Okay. So you can take your first pass with this and then you kind of put this along the ceiling and it'll just shave right in there. So are there different parts of the ceiling that you use the different tools? Yes, so first thing I do is I spray and I like to work in sections. So I spray my ceiling and if you ever wanna, before you even start, know if your popcorn ceiling will come off, you can get a spot wet. And then you, I have a sample board here, so here, I have, um, it's nice and dry, and when I push on it, nothing happens. But up here and in the middle, you can see I have it on oh. my finger. Like, so I just got this wet, and a lot of times these popcorn ceilings, they, there's so much texture on there, they didn't paint them. So if you know your ceilings haven't been painted and you're thinking about removing them, I would do this first, because once you paint it, it kind of seals it and it's harder to remove. So then I just start in one section and I spray it down and I wait 15 to 20 minutes. Once I know it's soft like this, then I get my scraping stuff ready and I'll spray my next section and then go back and start scraping. So how big of a section are you doing? Um, like a three by five. I would start smaller until you kind of get comfortable. Okay. Cause the thing is too, you don't want to saturate all the way through to your drywall. The goal is to get this soft enough that it easily comes off without saturating that drywall. You don't want to have mold issues. So you're not sitting there like, Yes. going at yes. it for like 20 minutes. It's coming off pretty easy. It really, and that's the key. You want to make sure it does come off easy. Otherwise, when you're really getting aggressive, you're going to damage your drywall underneath. Okay. And if your plan is to just put some flat ceiling paint over that, you're going to see more damaged areas. So for this, I'm going to use my small scraper just because of the scale of this, but I, I always start with either this big one or this guy. Um, and then you'll see it just... Oh, wow. And that's how easily it will come off of the ceiling. And then and do you just let that fall to the floor? Yep. It's very messy. And you'll want some safety goggles on, too, so you don't get stuff in your eyes. But it literally just scrapes right off. Um, and it's kind of gratifying. I like doing it. It's, it's not complicated. But you can see over here, if I try to do this spot that's not wet enough, it just does not come off. Right. So, so you mentioned that you wear a face mask and do you also use safety goggles while safety you're doing goggles. this? Safety okay. That's a big one. Make sure it doesn't get yep. on any part. Yep. So, I mean, yes, it is very simple, but if you have a large ceiling area, it is going to be a time consuming, but mm -hmm. I mean, doing this yourself is going to save you a lot. But I want to talk a little bit about um, different trends then. Okay. So we're removing our popcorn ceiling and then what are some things that we're seeing that can really up your house and your ceilings? Absolutely. So they always call the ceiling that fifth wall. So you want to kind of think about and address it. You can always paint it with a flat paint. You could paint it a sh couple shades on the fan deck lighter than your wall color. You can do shiplap, that's what I did in our basement where you take shiplap and just put it directly, find your studs, make sure you're putting it into a stud. Um, you can do more of the uh, board and batten look, 
Um, you can do beams. There's all sorts of things that you can do to dress up your ceiling and give it a little attention. Um, so but with that shiplap, are you using like wood or are you using what, white wood? There's a couple different ways you can do it depending on your budget. If you want to keep it really cost effective, you can have quarter ply like this actually. This is just a quarter ply um, shaved down into however wide you want them, like a four by eight sheet. And uh, Home Depot will actually do that for you. Otherwise, you can actually get shiplap, which is what I did. I got shiplap. They have pre-painted shiplap at Lowe's. Um, and so then you just tack that on. Okay. And they kind of, um, shiplap kind of sits together on top of each other too. So if you are going to just go the route where you paint it after getting this popcorn ceiling part removed, I mean, are you doing the same color as your walls? Or are you using that as an accent wall? What are the type of colors that you're going to want to use if it's up? I would do a couple things. First of all, on the ceiling, I would always do flat, especially after you've done this. The key is to try to get as minimal damage as possible, but if you have any sheen on the ceiling, when you have your lights on, you'll see those damaged areas. So you want a nice okay. flat paint. And then you can either do a white if you want it to be bright, depending on what color, or I like the idea of going a couple shades lighter, especially if, if you have a dark wall color on that swatch, go a couple shades lighter and do that on your ceiling. And then it kind of just blends together and have, instead of having that stark contrast between the ceiling and the wall. Wow. Um, if, you have this, if you have a lighter wall color, you could just do that color in a flat color, in flat paint. Okay, well, this is pretty amazing. I didn't know it could be so, something so simply done by yourself. So thank you so much for coming in and giving us different tips and ideas of what we could change it into. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.